In this video, we're going to explore motion graphs, focusing on the gradient of position time graphs, velocity time graphs, and acceleration time graphs. We'll explore both uniform and non-uniform motion. For all graphs, we'll focus on interpreting graphs to understand the motion shown, drawing graphs from descriptions of motion, and drawing different types of graphs for the same motion. Let's start with uniform motion and how it is represented on a position time and velocity time graph. An object has uniform motion when its velocity does not change over time. This means the object travels at a constant speed in a straight line. Consider the scenario in which a dog moves in a positive direction at a constant velocity. The dog's displacement will be the same for each time interval. The dog's motion produces a linear position time graph with a positive slope. Velocity is displacement over time. This is the gradient of the position time graph. The change in displacement, which can be read off of the vertical axis of the graph, is 5 meters. The time over which this change occurs, which can be read off of the horizontal axis of the graph, is 5 seconds. Therefore, the gradient, and velocity, is 1 meter per second. Now let's consider how we can represent this on a velocity time graph. A velocity time graph represents the relationship between velocity and time for an object's motion. In the case of uniform motion, the object travels with a constant velocity. This means that its velocity does not change over time, and as a result, the velocity time graph for uniform motion appears as a flat line. The velocity we calculated from the position time graph is the vertical axis intercept of the velocity time graph. Uniform motion produces a horizontal velocity time graph with a gradient of zero. There are three types of uniform motion we'll consider. First, a stationary object. A stationary object has a velocity of zero, so the gradient of the position time graph is zero. As discussed previously, the velocity time graph will have a gradient of zero when the object has uniform motion. When the object is stationary, the velocity time graph will have a vertical axis value of zero because the object has a velocity of zero. Next, let's consider an object moving with uniform velocity in a positive direction. The position time graph will be a straight line with a constant positive gradient, which is equal to the object's velocity. The corresponding velocity time graph will have a gradient of zero, and the vertical axis value for the graph will be equal to the gradient of the position time graph. Because the velocity is in a positive direction, the graph will be located above the time axis. Finally, let's consider an object moving with uniform velocity in a negative direction. The position time graph will be a straight line with a constant negative gradient, which is equal to the object's velocity. The corresponding velocity time graph will again have a gradient of zero, but now the vertical axis value of the graph will be negative because the object's velocity is negative. We're going to shift our focus now to non-uniform motion or acceleration. We'll explore how a position time graph and a velocity time graph look when an object's velocity changes with time. We'll start with the position time graph. Here we see a basketball moving to the right with increasing velocity. The displacement of the basketball during each one second interval increases as it moves. The position time graph of the motion is no longer linear, but instead curves upward, getting steeper with time. This increasing gradient reflects the steady increase in the velocity. Interpreting position time graphs that depict non-uniform motion is a little bit more complex than interpreting position time graphs that depict uniform motion. However, we're still able to determine the object's velocity from the graph. When an object has non-uniform motion, we can determine its instantaneous and average velocity from a position time graph. Instantaneous velocity refers to the velocity of an object at a specific instant or moment in time. It represents the object's velocity at an infinitesimally small time interval. Graphically, this means that if we draw a tangent line to the graph at a given time, the gradient of the tangent line is the instantaneous velocity at that time. We can determine the instantaneous velocity at several times during the object's motion to understand how its velocity changes over time. We can see for the basketball that the instantaneous velocity increases from one meter per second at one second to 2 meters per second at 2 seconds, to 3 meters per second at 3 seconds. Average velocity represents the overall motion of an object over a given time interval and is calculated using total displacement and total time. Graphically, the average velocity can be calculated by determining the gradient of a line connecting the initial position and the final position over a time interval.
For the basketball, we can see that over the first 5 seconds of motion, the average velocity is 2.5 meters per second. Next, we'll explore what information we're able to discern using average velocity and instantaneous velocity for an object that is accelerating. Let's focus on instantaneous velocity for the basketball. The basketball was initially at rest, so it has an instantaneous velocity of zero. We can plot this instantaneous velocity on the corresponding velocity time graph at time zero. At one second, the basketball had an instantaneous velocity of one meter per second, determined by the gradient of the tangent to the graph at that point. Again, we can plot this instantaneous velocity on the velocity time graph. We can continue determining the instantaneous velocity each second using tangent lines to the graph, then plotting this velocity on the velocity time graph and can draw a best fit line through the data. By plotting the instantaneous velocity over the time interval, we can clearly see that the velocity increases linearly with time. The gradient of the velocity time graph, that is the change in velocity over the time interval, is the acceleration of the object during that time interval. For the basketball, the change in velocity can be read from the vertical axis and is 5 meters per second. The time over which this change in velocity occurs can be read from the horizontal axis and is 5 seconds. Therefore, the gradient is 1 meter per second squared. So the basketball accelerated at a rate of 1 meter per second squared. If we assumed that the velocity over the time period was constant and equal to the average velocity over the whole time period, the graph would look like this instead. By plotting the average velocity, we are not able to determine the acceleration as there does not appear to be a change in velocity. When an object has non-uniform motion, the instantaneous rather than the average velocity provides significantly more information and allows us to calculate the object's acceleration. In our previous example, we examined an object moving and accelerating in a positive direction. The position time graph for this type of motion shows an object's position increasing in a positive direction over time. The graph is curved upward, increasing with steepness over time, since the object's velocity increases over time. Assuming the acceleration is uniform, the velocity time graph will show a straight line above the time axis with a positive gradient, which represents the acceleration. Since the acceleration is constant and positive, the acceleration time graph will have a gradient of zero and will be located above the time axis. We see similar graphs when an object moving in a negative direction accelerates in a negative direction. The position time graph gets steeper over time in a negative direction, so the velocity increases over time in a negative direction and the acceleration is constant in a negative direction. If the object moves in one direction and accelerates in another, our graphs will look a little different as the object will slow down over time. Let's consider an object with a positive velocity but negative acceleration. The position time graph shows the object's position increasing in a positive direction over time. The graph is curved downward and its steepness decreases with time. The object's velocity decreases over time in a positive direction. Assuming the acceleration is uniform, the velocity time graph will show a straight line above the time axis with a negative gradient, which represents the acceleration. The velocity approaches zero as the object slows. Since the acceleration is constant and negative, the acceleration time graph will have a gradient of zero and will be located below the time axis. We see similar graphs when an object moving in a negative direction accelerates in a positive direction. The position time graph gets less steep over time in a negative direction, so the velocity is becoming steadily less negative, representing a decrease in its magnitude, and the acceleration is constant in a positive direction. We can see these four acceleration scenarios here. If the position time graph gets steeper over time, the object's acceleration is in the same direction as its motion and the object speeds up. The velocity time graph will show the velocity increasing in the direction of motion away from the time axis. If the position time graph gets less steep over time, the object's acceleration is in the opposite direction of its motion and the object slows down. The velocity time graph will show the velocity decreasing in the direction of motion toward the time axis. The acceleration time graph for uniform acceleration, which is all we'll consider in kinematics, will always have a gradient of zero. The vertical axis value of the acceleration time graph is equal to the gradient of the velocity time graph and will be above the time axis when the object accelerates in a positive direction and will be below the time axis when the object accelerates in a negative direction. All right, so just a final summary of the key understandings needed about motion graphs. For uniform motion, a position time graph will be a straight line. The gradient of the line is the velocity. The velocity time graph will be a horizontal line and its vertical axis value is the velocity or gradient of the position time graph.
For uniform motion, an acceleration time graph will be a horizontal line along the time axis. For non-uniform motion, a position time graph will be a curved line. The direction of the curve determines how the object's motion changes with time. The gradient of a tangent to the curve is the object's instantaneous velocity, and plotting the instantaneous velocity against time produces a velocity time graph that is a straight line, assuming uniform acceleration. The gradient of this line is once again acceleration. For non-uniform motion, but uniform acceleration, the acceleration time graph will be a horizontal line, and its vertical axis value is the acceleration, or gradient, of the velocity time graph.